Okay, this is standard 74, simplifying square roots. Okay, I'm first going to talk about what a radical expression is. Um, it is an expression that uses a root, such as a square root, cube root, fourth root, or higher. Okay, today we are specifically going to talk about square roots and how to simplify them, like the square root of 5. Um, and we will worry about the others later. Okay, parts of a radical. So the index is the smaller number up here that tells you what type of root it is. So for instance, this is a cubed root. Um, and then the number underneath is called the radicand. And, um, but again, we are going to specifically just talk about square roots today. So this, um, our index is technically 2, but we don't write 2's, it's understood. And, okay, so simplest form rules. This number one rule is the one I want you to focus on the most. This is what we're actually going to worry about today. It says no radicands have perfect square factors other than one. So we're going to simplify these to where um, underneath the radical, so the radicands, um, there's no longer perfect square factors such as 4 or 9 or um, 25. Okay, and then these other two rules we will actually worry about later, just not in this video. So no radicands contain fractions and no radicals appear in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so simplify. So this is number one, square root of 25. Obviously, I'm sure that you already knew that off the top of your head. Square root of 25 is 5. That's because 5 times 5 equals 25. Okay, so again, going back to my rule, to simplify radicals, there no radicands have perfect square factors other than 1. So we have 25 under here. We know that that's a perfect square, so that should no longer stay under the radical symbol. Um, that's why we simplified it to 5. So square root of 36, if you type that in your calculator or know off the top of your head, is 6. That's because 6 times 6 equals 36. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 equals 9. Okay, so these all happen to be perfect squares. And so uh, when you find the square root of them, it, it ends up being a whole number because it's a number multiplied by itself. Well, we are going to talk about how to simplify square roots when we're, we're taking the square root of something that is not a perfect square, such as square root of 54. If you type that in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. But we want to keep it nice, pretty, whole numbers. Um, okay, so going back one more time to my rule number one, no radicands have perfect square factors other than one if it's in simplest form. So that means we want to take out all of the perfect square factors. And the way we're going to do that is to first create a factor tree. Okay, I know you remember how to do factor trees from way back when you were younger. Um, so you want to go all the way down to the prime factors, and then we're going to take out pairs of them, because uh, with square roots, you want pairs to take out for perfect squares. Okay, so we're going to start by coming up with two numbers and multiply to 54. So I know that 9 and 6 multiply to 54. I know that um, 9 is not prime yet, so I'm going to keep going, and I know 3 times 3 multiplied to 9. Now 3's are prime so we're going to stop there. Now with 6 is not prime so I'm going to um, keep going with that and I have 3 and 2 and those are both prime. So now at this point like I said we're, because we want to pull out perfect squares we want to um, circle pairs. Okay, I see a pair of 3's here and then I have a 3 and a 2 left but they're not a pair so I can't circle them. So now, whatever you circle is now going to be on the outside. Okay, we're taking out perfect squares. So we're taking out a pair of threes, but you're only going to write one of them because, um, again, we're taking out pairs. So we have a pair of threes, so we only take out one of them. And I'm going to rewrite my radical. Now, the prime factors that we did not circle are going to go back underneath your radical symbol. 
multiplied back together. So I have 3 times 2, and we know that is 6, so I'm going to keep this 3 on the outside, and then my square root, and then I have 3 times 2, which is 6, and this is the simplified form. And that is it. Example 2. So I have 180 here. Okay, so a little bit bigger, but that's okay. So um, off the top of my head, I know that 18 and 10 multiply to 180. So I know that neither one of these are prime, so I'm going to keep going. So I have 18. I know that 9 and 2 multiply to 18. And so I know 9 can go further with 3 and 3. And then over here, I have 10, which 2 and 5 multiply together. So again, I want to circle my pairs. So I see a pair of threes here and a pair of twos here. And then that five is left alone. I haven't circled that. Okay. So the numbers that I circled are going to come on the outside and they're going to be multiplied back together. So I know I have a three that I took out and then I have a two that I took out of the radical because we were taking out our perfect squares. So then I have my square root sign and the only thing left underneath is my 5 because that's the only prime factor that I did not circle so continuing to just simplify we're gonna go ahead and multiply these together so I have 6 square root of 5 that means 6 times the square root of 5 and this is the simple form alright example 3 square root of 80 so I know that 8 times 10 is 80, and 8 breaks down to 2 and 4, and then 4 breaks down to 2 and 2, and over here 10 breaks down to 2 and 5, and I know I can't go any further, so I'm going to go through and circle my pairs. So I have a pair of 2's here, and a pair of 2's there, and then my 5 is left alone. So, again, I'm going to take out this pair of 2's, and then I'm going to multiply it by my second pair of 2's. The, remember, the circles are going on the outside. And then I have my square root, and then my 5 that's left alone underneath. And, of course, I need to multiply my two outside numbers back together. So, 2 times 2, of course, is 4, and I have the square root of 5. And there's my answer. Last type of example, example four. Okay, I have um, variables involved this time. So it gets a little more difficult, but I don't want you to freak out because I personally think the variables are easier. So the, nine, the square root of 90 part, I'm still going to make my factor tree. So I know that 10 and 9 multiply to 90. So 9 breaks down to 3 and 3, and 10 breaks down to 2 and 5. I'm still going to go through and circle my pairs. Now, the variables are the exact same way. So the way I do the variables, I still like to write them all out. Okay, so I have x cubed, so I know I have x, x, and x underneath there. I have 4y, so I 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I have 5z, so I have z. Z, 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 Z. Okay, and now I'm going to once again circle all of my pairs. So I have my pair of threes. I have a pair of X's. I have a pair of Y's here. A pair of Y's there. I have a pair of Z's there. And a pair of Z's there. And then my, my loners are still there. Okay, so all of my circled pairs are going to come on the outside of my radical. So I'm going to keep that red. I have this pair of three, so I'm going to write that down, times this pair of X's that I circled, this pair of Y's that I circled, this other pair of Y's that I circled, the Z's that I circled, the other pair of Z's that I circled. Okay, and then underneath my radical, I have every little prime 
factor and variable that's by itself. So I have this 2 times multiplied back by this 5. And then I have this x. And I have this z. Okay, those were all uh, loners. They were not circles. They were pairs, so they could not be taken out. They were not perfect squares. Okay, so now, of course, you have to simplify. So multiply everything back together. So on the outside, I have 3x. I have y times y, so y squared. z squared. Square root of 2 times 5 is 10 x and z that is my final answer now obviously that one got a little more difficult but we will practice more later with that all right go ahead and attempt the u try problems so start with your factor trees um, simplify all the way down circle your pairs take your pairs out and leave what's underneath underneath and then bring your work to class tomorrow